Hey, everybody, welcome to Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. I can't believe it's taken this long to cover the Planet of the Symbiotes arc because this is the origin <laughs> of the species for the symbiotes. <laughs> I need you guys to <laughs> That's forget. That's what I should have called it. Origin of the species. Yeah, I need you to forget everything you've ever known about Clintars, what? Kings in Black, symbiotes outside. That's all of, I know about yeah, like what, <laughs> what the, they are. Right. Just all you need to know. Well, why does this exist? We're, going, is, we're going back to a simpler time. 1995, Venom has had up to four or five miniseries. Spider-Man has a clone named Ben Riley, mm -hmm. who is right now active as the Scarlet Spider. He is wearing an outfit that Wizard Magazine called the mort of the month due to his existence slash outfit, it went off the scale. That's how bad it was back then, <laughs> but has now retroactively become the coolest and best Spider-Man costume of all time, thanks what? to nostalgia goggles. Oh. Wait, it's better than Spider-Man's costume? I think there are many people in the comments right now who are saying that specifically. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Planet of the Symbiotes, written by David Michelinie, with art by various uh, artists. This particular story is collected in a book called Venom, Planet of the Symbiotes. It's in the comments down below if you want to get a copy. Uh, it is straight up not Venom, Planet of the Symbiotes. It's a Spider-Man book. And one of the chapters is Venom. These are using super special issues. These are made up <laughs> for this event. Uh, every Spider-Man book got a super special issue that was another chapter in the Planet of the Symbiotes saga. But we also needed to charge you Four dollars, three ninety-five, per wow. issue. Well, how are we going to do that? We're going to give you at least three stories. So there is what? another story on the flip side of these oh. issues that feature a really mediocre story where Ben fights the lizard. I thought for a second that you were just calling it super special until I saw the <laughs> it actually says super special branding on there. I was this like, is super special. This is a super special issue. Oh nope, actually it it, it is. Is this uh, an event across multiple titles? These titles are uh, Amazing Spider-Man Super Special Number One, Spider-Man Super Special Number One, Venom Super Special Number One, Spectacular Spider-Man Super Special Number One, and finally Web of Spider-Man Super Special Number One. <laughs> Which is why this thing you collected is called Venom Planet of the Symbiotes. Man, Marvel loves that number one. They do. Marvel's Why? been loving that number one since the dawn of time. Are, are, is there not a story? Is that it it's five different stories? No, or no, 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 no. Order? It's an ongoing story. Well, how do you know what order to read them in? Because at the top it says Planet of the Symbiotes part one oh, of five. Part two, three, okay. four, five. <laughs> so they're number uh, can't one. Can't you clearly see it cramped up there two. in the yeah. corner? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We get the closure of Venom's separation anxiety for this as well. Okay. So Venom is in New York, and he's wondering what he should do with himself. You know, he's like, and, he, and he's also having problems because he's got the symbiote. They bonded, you know, and he's like, what am I going to do about this suit? And can I trust my own thoughts with mm. the suit on me? Right. You know, because the suit has also proven to hide things from Eddie's mind, which is long established and will then be used to greater degree by Donny Cates by hiding a secret son named Dylan. Right. But there's a long history of the suit kind of protecting Venom from truths he doesn't necessarily want to Being face. Being his own, his own legal protector. That's right. So, so does Eddie wear it all the time? The suit is on him, in him, attached to him, and it also mimics clothing, so he never has to wear clothes. So the, Eddie's default is a pair of tidy whities And the suit mimics clothing at all times. Has Eddie questioned whether or not just exposure to this is what's driving him crazy or making him like that? Right, nah, like maybe nobody's really took it off. It. Like you're, like well, you're you can't a, take it off. It's bonded. We're together. Like, like we're you're one. a human being who has this alien being on you. Yeah. Attached to me physiologically. Right? Like, yeah, it's probably not good for you. It, it is feels not. feels like it's not. I feel like he should come with a warning. I mean, <laughs> you know, ask Donny Cates about that because he establishes that like we've been using symbiotes since the Vietnam War. <laughs> Spider-Man is embroiled in some classic Spider-Man shenanigans. He's in a warehouse. Now we're talking. <laughs> Peter Parker in the red and blues fighting Neo-Luddites. What? These Neo-Luddites, they're militarized anti-technology forces. They're using a, laser guns. That's right. Which Spider-Man calls out their hypocrisy. <laughs> and they're like, look. Like, I'm going to use every weapon in my arsenal right. to achieve my end. And then I'll throw it away when I'm done. Naturally. I, right. I, I, I bet I do. Yeah, yeah I bet you I'm do. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll also throw away MRI machines. <laughs> 
and all kinds of other <laughs> terrible technology. Well, we're, we're young. We don't need those. Yeah. We're, we're good. I'll right? never need one. Don't even worry about them. <laughs> they are a means to an end. The mm -hmm. idea is they're trying to steal or destroy a machine. The machine is going to be co-opted and then used to greater effect in a Venom story that is attached to this. That's what's important. I see. The important thing is we got to get to Venom. Venom is what sells the hotcakes here. Let's go. The machine they're trying to get is the Kleisten Wave Modulator. Sure. Right. And I, they're after it, what, because it's like the most technology in one box they can find? Yes. The, okay. the, the, the Have modulator. Have you guys been to the Fantastic Four's headquarters? Right? <laughs> we, it, no, it, it's very well defended. Yeah, if they wanted, <laughs> because they're not, they're not afraid of trying out like rip from the headlines concepts. So it's like before the World Trade Center was destroyed, right. there was a bombing at the World Trade Center yeah. and it was used in Marvel Comics. And they could have easily been like, let's do a World Trade Center bombing story, but for the Baxter building. But then it would have gotten the Fantastic Four involved. Right. Anyway, this modulator, it enhances power to whatever it's plugged into. That's what it does. But like, a lot. While Spider-Man's fighting these classic villains that you will <laughs> see time and time again, uh, Eddie is brooding on top of an adjacent roof, wondering about this whole conundrum he's faced with, when a stray piece of technology is thrown through the roof of the warehouse that they're fighting in. So that triggers Venom. So Eddie slash the costume Venom, like jump into the fray and join in. And Spider-Man's like, fantastic. This is exactly what I needed. I needed Venom to complicate the story <laughs> enough. Great. So Venom webs up one of the Luddites. Yeah. And then proceeds to threaten to eat them. Like he's wont to do. He right. does that a lot. Yeah. I'm sorry, all of him or just his brains? Yeah. Just the brains. He talks about how his brains are small, but they'll still be like an hors d'oeuvre. Uh, but he's going to do it. And Spider-Man's like, crap, I have to get over to him, but there's so many of these Luddites that I can't get to him in time. And while Eddie is rearing back to kill them, he says, no, I, I didn't say to kill him. And then the suit responds and he's like, oh, no, wait, I thought it? Are you sure? And he's just... He's just blue screening. Right. But he's saying it out loud, and Spider-Man's like, oh my god. He's actually having misgivings about being about Venom. Venom. Right. Yeah. Maybe I can exploit this. Because sure. it's been a problem for me forever, and I you know I like shook his hand in Amazing 375, <laughs> but like, who cares? But I didn't want to. I don't want him to be active at all. Yeah. And so uh, one of the Luddites drops a name in their efforts to stop Spider-Man. They mention Spurzel, and Spider-Man's like, okay. Actually, and what's funny is through Spurzel, we're also gonna get the Fantastic Four involved in this. Stuff. What? Or at least okay. one fourth of them. What? So oh. Venom gives them the slip, Spider-Man webs up the bad guys for the police, and he leaves. And he's like, all right, well now I've got a working plan for how to deal with Venom. I'm going to use psychology on him. <laughs> because I know there's like a little bit right. of like a break. I feel the conflict. Yes. Look at his but yeah that's epic like, yeah that's some some cheesecake right there. <laughs> that's right you're welcome venom's like i got this yeah <laughs> eddie does not have that much of an ass no venom's no like, he does he works out a lot like he definitely <laughs> works on those glutes but uh if he didn't the suit could still sculpt his cellulite into something that looks like <laughs> one hell of an ass yeah <laughs> Because that's what Venom does in every single miniseries. And I actually read another miniseries to prepare for this episode, and it was so effing off the wall, I vetoed it and went with Planet of the Symbiotes. <laughs> but every single story with Venom in them is, Venom is like, oh, what am I gonna do? I'm so sad or confused or conflicted about X, Y, Z. Myself, my subterranean city, uh, some company I'm working for, some chick I'm with, <laughs> or the soup. Oh, time to be Venom. Blah! I'm a cartoon character that murders people. Blah! <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I did that. Uh, Rinse and repeat. Yeah. Right. So he's like, oh man, like I have to be strong. If I'm gonna be an anti-hero, like a stable of the Marvel Universe, I gotta like get my head in the game here suit, and I can't like I I can't be waffling. I I don't like the suit. Talking. When it's not it like he, Well it doesn't talk. He looks like a deflated windsock. Yes. <laughs> you know. So Spider-Man goes home, he talks to Mary Jane. She's like, yeah, you know, Venom sucks, blah. Uh, he's, the, the, the interaction is he's trying to get her to drink whole milk despite how many calories it has because it's good for the baby. 
And I don't know if that's a thing mm -hmm. anymore. I think that's out. So Spider-Man goes to the Baxter building. Only Ben's there. He's playing with a Rubik's Cube and smoking cigars. Mm -hmm. Something you'll never see him do again. Aww. And uh, the Rubik's Cube, not the cigar. Uh, oh. not the <laughs> he wants to use the database because he's like, maybe Reed, because the Fantastic Four have multiple times held the symbiote, and Reed has definitely done research on it. Right. So Pete wants to take a look at some of the research. Like, knock yourself out, feel, feel free. Sure. Just go to the file marked Spider-Man and it'll be there. Mm -hmm. So he opens it up and he's looking through it. And that's a great opportunity for Michelinie to give you two pages of exposition to re-explain how he got the suit. But while he's pulling up Bupkis, he also comes across, because he's looking up Spider-Man, in the alphabetical listing, he finds Spetzel and he's like, Oh! Name's Spetzel? Spurzel, actually. Oh, okay. But mm -hmm. not much in between Spider Man and Spurzel and. There's Sphinx and there's a bunch of gobbledygook, but Ben chimes in and he goes, Whoa, whoa, that's Anton Spurzel? He's a cybernetics engineer that Reed used to work with. And he's like, Holy crap, he's giving a symposium right now. Let's go. And Ben's like, You got it. He smashes the Rubik's Cube and he jumps into the Fantastic what? Car. Ben's he going? And now Spider Man and the thing are going to team up and Venom's going to follow him. Why does he smash his Rubik's Cube? Because he wasn't, you know, he's just. Why was he doing it in the first place? It's he for was dramatic just effect. Smash it. Yeah, okay. So anyway, uh, Spurzel's given a symposium on using virtual reality and artificial intelligence. Basically, you put on this helmet and it'll control this robot, and the big robot will uh, be able to, like, do stuff. Like, go places that humans can't and manipulate them. You sure. Know, you know, like go into volcanoes and crap. Uh, of yeah. course, the Neo-Luddites love this because they want to destroy this robot. Oh, yes. There, there will at That's some too point useful. Yeah. be a planet of symbiotes. In oh, yeah. Right? Oh. Well, we got we to we gotta, we gotta transition. There. We got to build uh, to okay, it. Okay, okay. Exactly. Because right now the thing's here. Yeah. And I would love it if the thing remained, but, but he will He will depart. He's, yeah, gonna go, he's not going to make it out of this issue, right? He's no. like, I don't... I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah, that's dumb. I hate Venom. I don't want to be involved. Mm -hmm. So Spider-Man and the Thing team up to fight the Neo-Luddites. <sighs> and of course... Which he doesn't really need. He, he kicked their butts last time, Yeah, but right? now like, they have... They, I mean, I guess Venom... There's still a problem. They, they punch Spurzel and they take his helmet. And so now they're going to use his big robot that looks like an evil machine from G.I. Joe <laughs> to attack them. <laughs> which, of course, they do. And so... You know, Spider-Man tries to web their gears and doesn't work. And then Ben tries to fight them. And it's really strong. He's like, it's knocking my rocks off. And I'm like, uh-oh. Spurzel's going to get killed by his own machine when Venom springs into action and rescues him. And so you're like, oh, man, now Venom's involved. This oh, is, man, Venom's stronger than the thing. This is worth three ninety five. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'm in. So while Venom is doing stuff, like helping out and fighting the Luddites, Spider-Man immediately is like, Venom, what are you doing here? And Venom's like, I kind of thought maybe like we could talk for a second because you knew me before I got the suit, or at least mm. knew of me. You know, like you've known me the longest out of everybody here. <laughs> and Spider-Man goes, dude, what if you're the innocent? What if you were never insane? What if it was always the costume? Mm. And Venom's like, oh. <laughs> so it just makes him stop doing everything. He just freezes and Spider-Man's like, nice. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, the thing is wearing pants he and is. boots. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> That's almost a full outfit, Ben. That's true. <laughs> I think that the thing's greatest costume is his disfigured body. <laughs> but if you want to give him pants and boots, fine. But let's split the difference and just leave him topless. Yeah, he's just shirtless. Yeah. Yeah. So Ben destroys the priceless machine made by this poor scientist. And he will never be able to rebuild it, so that's nice. over. And uh, well, it's not like he's super old or anything. You're right. Well, he is. <laughs> no, I. Don't. So uh, <laughs> my life's work. Yeah. So and he doesn't. Even, we don't even get closure on him. And then he, he turns to dust and floats away. <laughs> That actually happens in this book, but it hasn't happened What? Yet. So uh, Venom leaves. He gives him the slip, and he goes into a park, and he's like, okay, I, I, that really messed me up, like, more than I thought it would. So I need you to let go so I can, like, really get my thoughts together. And the suit, like, moves away, and he goes, no, 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 I need you to detach from me. Don't you understand? I don't want you right now. Oh. And he detaches, and the suit slinks away, <laughs> and... So upset and melodramatic is the suit that it gives a silent scream of agony that reverberates throughout the known universe. The silent scream reverberates. That's what they say. What does that mean? It's really a psychic wail. Oh. It's a scream that we don't hear. So see, they call it a shriek, it, which right. I think is 
appropriate when you're dealing with symbiotes. This is true. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So this uh, shriek that the symbiote emits mm -hmm. can be heard galaxies away, but also only affects the general vicinity of the city and the agony that the suit feels by being asked legitimately to give him some space for five minutes. <laughs> this is a very healthy relationship. Very. In. Very healthy yes, relationship. Yes, absolutely. Codependency. That's what this book should be called. <laughs> so it affects the mental state of people in the surrounding areas. The shriek causes people to have like melodramatic breakdowns. Like the, 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 this woman is talking to her husband. She's like, what's going on? He's like, I don't know. I just can't take it anymore. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? That could happen anytime. Exactly. <laughs> a, a, an inordinate amount of alcohol is purchased that evening. Mm. And in some more rare cases, there's like a dude in his office who calls his wife and he's like, sorry, Doris, I just can't take it anymore. And just pulls out a gun from his drawer. Oh my God. You're like, what? Also, as if this book isn't loaded enough, because we've got Spider-Man, we got Venom, we've got The Thing, we know Ben Riley's coming, but also dovetailing out of Carnage Unleashed. Oh no. The story arc we did in which Carnage and Venom go into the internet. <laughs> that concludes with Carnage going into a coma, which I don't think he did at the end of that story, but now he's in one. Mm -hmm. And so he's in a coma and Maybe that shriek somehow affected Cletus's mind. And so while he will continue to be in the coma for at least two chapters, <laughs> people around him will be concerned that he might come out of the coma, which <laughs> I think anyone would be concerned about at any given moment, but we're going to be focusing on right. it right now for this story. Well, he's been in a coma for enough days that people stopped worrying about it. Exactly. Now, Wouldn't this be like right around the time that the Punisher sh show up and be like, I'll just... That would be Take awesome. Just, yeah. The problem, well, yeah, he and he would, move. he would need to smother him because the symbiote is within him. It's in his bloodstream. So, like, mm. if Punisher shot Cletus, the suit would come out of him. All right, what if they, okay, I'm not suggesting this. That is a good idea. I just want to have this thought exercise. What if they set him on fire? Right. Right. That I think that's work. not a bad idea. Yeah. That's what they did in the last story. Like, he's in, he's in bed, you know, like. Yeah, just yeah. just torture. Just torture. Just burn down the hospital. I agree, especially in his com in his comatose state. Yeah. Yeah. What's he gonna even do? He's not gonna do anything. Yeah. Burn. That's what he's gonna do. So we indicate that there is this dude who is controlled by a symbiote. We assume it's Venom. Oh, okay. He, oh, that like Venom was like, find, find someone else. Yeah, exactly. Right, That's what right. we're supposed to yeah. believe. And it's okay. puppeting this guy who's like, please, just let this thing go away. And the most trigger-happy security guard in the world is like, hey, stay right there. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> just unloads his clip into this guy. <laughs> wow. And, you sound crazy. Blah, 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 blah. Well, he's not supposed to be there. He's at like the science expo or something. Oh, one hour before dawn, so it's quite late oh, yeah. or early. Definitely but, uh, deserves to die. Oh, exactly. Yeah, we should definitely murder this man. <laughs> the suit catches all the bullets and then just like, it murders the security guard. Oh. Maybe that yeah. guy knew. Maybe he had a premonition. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, like you're the wrong. guy! You're the guy. So, uh, after... So we don't see Peter and Ben Grimm chat, but Grimm gives Spider-Man a sonic blaster, which has been long established in their history, particularly when it comes to Venom, Spider-Man, and the Fantastic Four. Because Peter doesn't have the resources. To right. make that kind to of thing. To make a sonic yeah. blaster. He and can make web shooters that yes. are miraculous, but... Is there true. like a mandate at Marvel? Like, when Peter Parker is at home with his wife, do not put a shirt on him. That's right. <laughs> we got to show just how ripped he is. Yeah. Like, I don't want to... He can be in his Spider-Man outfit, but just the pants. No shirt. Yeah. I do not want to see... I want to see his rippling muscles. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when else are you going to see him? That's true. Uh, except every time he wears the suit. Uh, <laughs> is he intentionally matching Mary Jane's outfit? I, what is happening? I think lazy coloring is taking place in ah. this. Maybe they got his and hers. Yeah, matching like, pajamas? Uh, pajamas. Or like workout Yeah, I can't even stuff. tell. I guess it's okay. She's like a tank top. Yeah, I think it's pajamas. <sighs> It's hideous. I agree. So there were some high tech thefts going on. We have to assume. Oh, must be the Neo Luddites. It's the yeah. Neo Luddites going on, but, may, but maybe not because we already dispatched them. But this I have to assume it was the Luddites. And right. so Spider Man gears up, he grabs his symbiote blaster, sonic blaster, and he leaves. And he goes and finds Cutie's <clears throat> cast and he just blasts him with it. Right? I would. Just Except we've already established that Maximum Carnage doesn't work. Uh, sonic blaster right. doesn't work on him. 
So, so uh, yeah, but the fire. Mm -hmm. Yep, back to fire. Exactly. It always back to fire. It always comes back to fire. Of course. So Spider-Man goes to uh, the crime scene that took place at the Science Expo, and while he's investigating it, Ben Riley shows up. He's like, hey, Scarlet Spider. Those are like two very fun panels. I agree. Like, that's just cute. All right? So while Ben and Pete are reacquainted, uh, Eddie Brock appears. And he's like, hey. And they're like, all right, don't you venom out or I'll shoot you with the Sonic Blaster, which doesn't work on Carnage, but it sure as hell works on you. Yeah. And he's like, it's cool. It's just me. Like, right. I, I thought maybe my suit was making me murder people, so I sent it away for a little while. Also, you got, like, a haircut. Yeah. Yep. I assume the suit does that. <laughs> it cuts his hair? Yeah, like, while he's in there. It probably just ate the parts that he doesn't want. No, like, he, he in, the la in this him. issue, yeah, he's, long, he's got, like, a long mane. I agree. Oh. So he See? must have stopped for a haircut on the way over here. Yeah, well, maybe the symbiote ate it as he was separated As he was from. leaving, yeah, was like, he's like, I'm no, taking something with like you. grabbing his hair and, like, and ripped it out. perfectly sculpted it oh, in yeah. a position that looks he's like just, Eddie Brock. He's just in the head. darkness sniffing Eddie's hair clippings that yeah. he took. <laughs> exactly. Or Eddie let himself go as long as the symbiote was on him. Because he's like, I don't need to do anything. The symbiote takes care of everything. That's right. That's why the his symbiote hair likes long. my hair long. That's why I leave it that way. Yeah. I've always hated it. I don't want to show the symbiote when we do get reacquainted that I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I got a haircut all my own. This breakup with the symbiote. <laughs> so they're like, all right, all right, I guess that's cool. Well, here, uh, take the sonic blaster to protect yourself since you're just a guy. And mm -hmm. Ben goes, uh, uh, Peter, sidebar? Why are you giving him that? Like, he's still a murderer and a psychopath. Mm -hmm. And he's like, Look, I'm trying to. Like keep this breakup going, and this is a this is a gesture of trust. The sonic gun doesn't work on us. We don't have symbiotes. So right. this dude so is can't. not just a guy. He's like he's just. I a, know he's brick. He's a he's a brick shit house. Like, but like, <laughs> yeah, he's a still, wall of a man. Right, but it's still nothing compared to Pete sure. and Ben. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like, all right. So this is another example of Peter's like being he's like compromising yes integrity a little bit well it's, it's like giving a murderer a gun but it's a sonic gun and only like works peter on parker Venoms. wouldn't do that i feel no. like this <laughs> is very peter parker this where is... he doesn't want to lose hope in someone and he's mm. like yeah you know what like this is my responsibility i brought this suit back i did this to him yes right. even well, if true. it was his choice and like he was in a weird like horrible place mm -hmm. when like the two of them met like i could see peter totally taking that guilt yeah. on himself so like that seems to be actually more Peter Parker yeah, yeah. than so. to be like, oh no, screw that guy. Yeah, he's a jerk. You're like no, Ben. Right? But you'll also see that Ben has a reason to be skittish. Okay. So Ben is like, all right, well we got to skedaddle because they're in Long Island right now where the last break-in took place. We're gonna get back to Manhattan because I have a good feeling that that Kleiston wave modulator might be stolen. And Pete's like, why do you even know about that? You weren't in that story. That was the thing. <laughs> And Ben's like, I read about it in the papers. And they're like, okay, that's really weird and suspicious that you would immediately go to that, but like, right. let's go anyway. So they do, and of course, it is being stolen uh, by a symbiote. And they're like, whoa. And so they attack the symbiote. The symbiote fights them. Is Ben Riley working for the symbiotes? Oh, good question. <laughs> and one that is not terribly well conveyed by the art and the writing. Uh, I guess I should also point out who wrote and drew all of these. Oh, yeah. yeah David Nicolini wrote all of this, but the first story, oh. this first story is drawn by Dave Hoover. The second chapter is drawn by Joe St. Pierre. They fight the symbiote. Uh, it is on a guy, a hapless guy, the guy from before. Now, I, I will point out it's clearly not Venom. Oh, yeah, no. Because it doesn't have... The logo on it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Obviously, this, this symbiote has never run into Spider-Man oh, or fallen in love with him, That's so he doesn't true. look like that. Right, but... But... But the writer, I think, is trading on the fact that there are a lot of lazy artists who have drawn Venom over the last couple of years, especially people like Kelly Jones, who selectively don't draw the spider because it gets in the way of the rippling muscles they want to draw. Uh. Uh, and so uh, like you don't know, based on like poor coloring or art, whether something is deliberate or an accident. And so you have to wait for a character right, to deliberately say sure what's going on. That it's not Venom. It's so frustrating. Just by looking at it. But okay. your keen detection skills, Tiffany, have served you well because it <laughs> is, in fact, not the Venom symbiote. Yay! Mm. So they rescue Eddie and they defeat the symbiote, or at the very least, like they fight it and they get it off of that guy. Uh, the symbiote. Before it goes scrumble on them. That's right. It, uh, it, it caves the <laughs> roof in on them. And then uh, they, they, they go 
for another lead that is suggested by Ben Riley. He's like, we gotta head north. And Spider-Man's like, oh, let me guess, another hunch of yours? It, and Ben's like, yeah. Does, does, is the Venom symbiote on Ben? Don't yeah. I, you don't have to, oh, okay, really? Yeah, it is. But Spider-Man is wondering, maybe Ben is becoming psychic or something. Yeah, that's probably it. That's good. Good idea, yeah. Peter. Yeah. Right? Sure. Great leap. That's the most logical explanation. Exactly. Huh. Maybe I will become psychic too, since we're clones. Right. Let me see. <laughs> well, I mean, he's like, well, nope. What's funny is he's not too. F he wouldn't be too far off because isn't that basically what the spider sense is? Just a very generic <laughs> blanket psychic right. power. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe he's found some way to, to expand spider the spider sense. I mean, I wish that Peter would at all think about that, but instead he's just like, Ben is a clone. But maybe he could be forming some new power because he's genetically identical to me, but is still an offshoot of me. Like it's just don't give any anyone ideas because like what happens if you make a clone but then they have the X gene? Right. Like what's mm. what if Spider Man were a mutant? Like what if Ben? Mm. Like what if ben Mr. Sinister stole Spider Man's DNA, which is actually in a story called Spider Man X Men by Chris Gage. Right. But like but, if one time like someone's like you know what actually Ben Riley has a has an has X an X gene. gene and now Ben Riley is on the X Men. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be way better. That'd be, that'd be so great they kill Ben Riley as Chasm, and he wakes up in an egg, and he gets all of his memories oh back, but also he's a mutant. Yeah. It'd be perfect. I'm fine with that. So when they but go But they wouldn't North, have a copy of him. Sure they would, because it's just like subtly, like, doesn't Cerebro just grab crap? Like, Only hey, if you have an XG and I get you. I guess I mean, they have to know he had it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they've been tracking it for some time. Oh, or, how about go. this, even better, uh, Madeline Pryor as like a kind of like pe like testament to her relationship with Ben, like snuck his DNA into Cerebro when she stole that helmet. It's not Cerebro, it's not a, a DNA, it's, his, it's a his, copy of his- Of his uh, memories. Yeah, of his brain. Mm. Yeah, there you go. So the trio, uh, Spider-Man, Ben Riley, and Eddie Brock go north and they find a Stargate. They call it a Stargate for two more issues and then they stop calling it a Stargate because somebody called them. <laughs> they like, call it a Stargate? I thought you were calling it a Stargate. Nope, they call it a Stargate uh, and they go, don't call it that anymore. Excuse me. No, you don't have a Stargate. Right. We have a Stargate. You can watch it over here on the <laughs> Sci-Fi Channel. <laughs> probably not. It's 1995. I don't know. You can go see Stargate. Yeah, yeah you can probably now. actually, yeah. This is great. It's a web. Yeah, Look get at it. Look at that. Right? Did they build this? The symbiotes built it looks that. Like Why would they build it as a web? <laughs> Ironically. <laughs> because they know that one of them <laughs> is spider-based in into webs. <laughs> I, I think it's because I, it's like it's one of those things where it's like, well, it's, no, you thought that Venom throws webs because no. of his interaction with Spider-Man, but actually, actually, right. inherently, symbiotes do that. Yeah, they make webs. They actually are into spiders. Well, because they're a hive mind, they are a web of. Existed. Oh, no. Wait, yeah, they're so a hive one of mind, then it should be a something. honeycomb. Right. And who says it isn't? <laughs> Me. So That's clearly a web. <laughs> they notice the Stargate and they're like, all right. On, one, one more thing. <laughs> I hate how off putting these things are. I know. They're, well, they're, because they're. Yeah. Like, I don't they're like very their, uncomfortable. I don't like their teeth. No, I don't like them either. I don't, I don't like, like their smiles. Yeah, it's just, I don't like them. Right? Yep. They're okay. aliens. They're supposed to look it. like aliens. But I think that's good. That means that the story's working. It's supposed to make you feel at unease. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they look like they're going to bite me. Yeah. Well, good. Now you're now you're part of the story. You're invested. <laughs> so they're like, oh, cray crap. Um, they must have stolen the modulator to boost the energy of the Stargate so that they can bring more of their brethren here. They, they, they here arrived the on place? scene. They're like, oh, my God, I figured it out. Yeah. Immediately. Yeah. One I mean, it's clearly a Stargate. Look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I, have you seen that movie? It looks just like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, wait a minute. That means that if the guy we fought over there wasn't Venom wasn't my symbiote, then where is he? And then they get uh, attacked by, you know, more drone symbiotes that are not building the Stargate or augmenting its power. Mm -hmm. uh, they get into a little fight with it. There's even like a child symbiote that's trying to get them. <laughs> uh, oh, watch out for that one. It's tiny, fast, yeah, and agile. That's right. It's ben, swift. <laughs> ben tries to use his patented impact webbing that makes him so popular. And, uh, you know, the symbiote like gets big and turns into like kind of like a kite and absorbs it. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> are there people in these symbiotes, or are there Some just them, lone yeah. symbiotes? Okay. Yeah, I think most of them have people in them. Yeah. Okay. So uh, Eddie tries to do anything and immediately fails. One of the symbiotes activates the Stargate, and 
Eddie, who is not used to firing a futuristic laser gun that shoots sonic power, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean, mm -hmm. uh, is just firing wildly and almost hits Ben, which blasts the Venom symbiote off of him. It was mimicking his torn hoodie. Oh. oh. And Which it, I uh, guess is why he was like, you don't, don't give him the gun. No, that's right. Right. Yeah, the symbiote was talking to Ben. Uh, you know, psychically or symbiotically, however you want to call it. Right. Um, the interesting thing about that is that's actually pretty in keeping with what's been going on. The last time that Ben fought Venom, the suit went off of Eddie and tried to bond with him. Oh. It was like, oh, you're kind of like Peter, maybe, but you don't have the history we do. Maybe, right. Maybe I maybe can get another shot. Maybe into it. Yeah. Right? Are you into this? You no, he camera? was not. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, he was get away. <laughs> So they all fall through the Stargate and they end up on another planet. Uh, oh, oh, that they was, just fall that, through it. That yeah. uh, that that escalated quickly. It did. So Eddie, Pete, and Ben end up on another planet. Uh, in this new story, which is drawn by Kyle Hotz, and it's called Monster World. Why yes. isn't it called Planet, Planet of the, the Symbiotes? Symbiotes? Because the whole damn thing is called Planet of the Symbiotes. Right, Every so issue gotta, has to have its own subtitle. We call it something well, else. It can't be Planet of the Symbiotes Chapter 3, Planet of the Symbiotes. No, that'd be redundant. <laughs> you know, on their own world, they're not monsters, right? Right. No, but they're not really on their <laughs> own world. That's what we call it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. This is what they would be recounting the story. <laughs> we so call it Planet of the... Or they call it Planet of the Symbiotes. Yes, that's yeah. right. Or, <laughs> or Clintar... No, that's oh, not yet. Not yet. They don't have yeah, that name yet. Okay. They're just symbiotes. They're, they're kind of neat looking. We're clearly ripping off Geiger or Giger, depending on how you want to right. pronounce that. Oh, that, yeah. Like 100% is just, can we do Alien? I know yep. we already kind of have done that right? with the brood. Yeah. Yep. But let's do it more. But like, let's make it really, let's just lean into it. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely Alien. Even the architecture is Alien. Yeah, the, right. the architecture is very like attempting it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the idea here is that the symbiotes have acquired another species and they're kicking around on these guys, which is why they look so cool. Yeah, why, oh. why does the, the Stargate look like an actual Stargate now that we're here? Well, it that's how it looks on this side. It looks like a big web. Like, how well, does that Because on our side, it's a web. That's right. Well, because on our side, they needed to approximate that. Like, they have a Stargate here and it looks like this because we use this alien technology uh -huh. in order to like sync up the technologies of Earth, which is much more primitive, they have to do the web thing. <laughs> you have to do a web You know why? Because yeah. there's two different artists. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so That's they, what we're looking for. Thank, thank you. you. So Who is the artist? This, this one is Kyle Holtz. Thank Kyle you, Holtz. I missed that earlier. So they, they're they inundated by symbiotes or people, aliens in symbiotes, so it's alien on alien action. Right. And Ooh, they're like, oh my God. Hot. I know, hot alien on alien action. <laughs> So uh, Eddie's like, all right, well, I need to talk to my other. So Ben, give up the suit. And then the suit jumps on him and he comes Venom, Venom again. Oh, he's just like, no, I want to be Venom. Well, I need to talk to the suit because the suit has information I need. Right. Dude, you think that the suit's like going to be like ever let you let go of him again now? Oh, yeah, no, it does. <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the suit's like, actually, you're right. I did need it some time away from No. <laughs> no, it, you know much, what, sometimes it, it gets we, much we worse, but they do separate a couple I, of times. I ate... Way more brains without you holding me yeah, back. I so. don't need you. Why anymore. would he go back to Eddie? Why wouldn't he just be like, or it? Why would right. he just be like, I like no, I'm on, a, I'm on a Spider Man right exactly. now. Exactly, I don't need yeah. you. Ben's like, well, where's my hoodie? Yeah. <laughs> what have you done with my hoodie? No, he's he's just naked, basically. Like, you can see, like, the, the, the hoodie was approximating his, yeah. Yeah. or the suit yeah, was approximating What happened his hoodie. to that hoodie? Yeah, he lost it. He has, I, I know this is just because it's like, Dude, digital coloring is freaking amazing. Yes. But like those like little strobes on his muscles. Yeah. Oh yeah. Too Look at that. Many. <laughs> Every muscle has its own little. He looks like he's made out of like thing. balloons with LEDs in them. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> so the suit proceeds to have Eddie as Venom tell the Spider-Man the history of the symbiotes. Okay. And the story that will be retconned heavily multiple times <laughs> after this Here we go. is that the symbiotes are a race of conquerors and they go around the galaxy 
consuming races and then using them up. Uh, the implication is that like they're not true symbiotes. Somebody ha there's always a give and take. Somebody's got to be on the receiving end of the symbiosis. It's not true symbiosis unless you're talking about Eddie and the suit because they're both super codependent mm -hmm. and insecure. Right. Uh, but everybody else, uh, the symbiotes use up their hosts. Oh. So they're parasites. Yes. Mm. So they use up their hosts and they destroy them and they go to another civilization. So they're just like, they've been planet hopping throughout. So they have access to like spaceships and crap. And, so they're uh, like the Independence Day aliens. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They're like locusts. They consume every natural resource and move on. Only they don't consume the natural resources, the people that they're uh, sure. jumping right. onto. So what, they just like don't eat and stuff until the people like die? I, I guess. I mean, <laughs> they just use them up. There's a moment where uh, they're watching them, like the trio, like they're in the Wizard of Freaking Oz, and they're just <laughs> watching them go. And uh, one of them just walking, that just spits out the corpse of the guy he was using. They're like, he didn't even care. Ooh, that's horrible. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's fair. Uh, uh, I thought they had like a bond with the uh, yeah, based on no. all previous experiences. So how yeah. would they have like the actual situation is that Eddie's suit, the Venom symbiote, is like an aberration. Rebel. It's oh. a rebel. It's like why? That's horrible. And so they put it into symbiote jail and they put him on a different planet, and then the Beyonder ripped that planet apart when it was making that battle world, and Ooh. that's where the symbiote ended up on Battle World. It was like, using technology that had been from his prison planet. So, so they absolutely need other races in order to exist. Yes. So how do they get this far and how can they actually do anything? Right. We don't know and they don't explain. Yeah, how do they get off their own well, planet? Oh, hey, it's the web. The, the web's back. Yeah, well, we're on Earth. We're looking at the Earth Stargate. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, this is an explanation page. Okay, gotcha. Mm. Wow. So, oh my God, those are just piles of corpses. Yeah, it's a it's a visual metaphor of the process of a symbiote. Jeez, the symbiotes are symbiote. like horrible. Yes, they're monsters. It's a corpse pile. It's it, it's so that you don't, yeah. so that you don't feel bad if they die. Right. Venom also proceeds to explain the psychic scream and how like in the solar system there was like a spaceship of them and so they heard that they came here they built the Stargate shouldn't he have were... known that it would happen then why would he do it it was because the suit didn't tell Eddie and the suit is emotional mm. it's just like overreacting the suit has the emotions yeah. of like a teenager yeah yeah <laughs> just it's... yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, he's like, why would you do that? Why would you scream if you knew it would draw their attention? I was upset. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think about these things yeah, when I, just, I feel I them. React. You like that about me. <laughs> you said that you love how emotional I am. <laughs> I I'm a passionate creature. Yeah. Did I? I mean, hang on, let me, let me bond with you and then you can <laughs> no, think about it again. No, no, no. So, hey, you remember Carnage? Yeah, yes. I mean, yes. One of the attending physicians monitoring Cletus Cassidy's coma like, he, he has his eyes open during the coma. And they're like, mm. ugh. And then at one point, he winks at one of the doctors. Like, he winked at me. I want him transferred. No. And they're like, Doc, he didn't wink at you. <laughs> and it, you can look at the book, and it's like, he definitely winked at him. He did wink but, at him. But uh, I, I, I believe everybody on this point. I'll be like, move him anywhere else. So they move <laughs> him away to a facility up north. And I guess they also have access to... Uh, xenomorphic technology or work yeah, from the what? engineers or Geiger himself <laughs> because this thing is just hoats going for broke Jeez. but they hook him up to this machine and they hook Cletus's brain waves up to another machine that translates his thoughts into binary which they will ignore in the next issue uh, and just change it into would you like to play a game like he just talks in regular <laughs> computer speak uh, but yeah. Why? Uh, who authorized this? Is this standard treatment? I don't understand. Sure. I mean, like, when it comes to Carnage, it's like, he's just a lab rat. Like, just right. keep him sedated he's, at he's all times. He's such a monster, we can just do whatever we want he, to him. Yeah, the Nobody Geneva will care. The Geneva Convention has nothing to do <laughs> with Cletus Cassidy. He is considered right. a war criminal. Right. So anyway, the trio is like, we gotta get the crap off this planet, and we need to blow up the Stargate so that these guys don't <laughs> send an invasion force to Earth. Because right. if they do, it's gonna be Planet of the Symbiotes up in here. <laughs> because we need more tension to this book. They're like, oh no, in order to turn off the gate, one of us has to stay behind. And Ben's like, I'm a clone, I'm not worth it, I'll stay. Jeez. And Venom's like, no, yeah, I know, shut up, Ben. <laughs> but, uh, me, but they're like, but, but Eddie's like, no. Venom goes, no, it, it operates on symbiotic technology, so like only I am able to operate it. And Pete's like, no argument with me, let's go. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> That's what I wanted anyway. Yeah, okay, great. I was going to leave you here anyway. 
turns out that the symbiotes, because of course, like they can change their appearance, and you sure. know they can turn to clothes, or they can be camouflaged. Mm -hmm. They were camouflaged the whole time, like xenomorphs, and uh, so they all come out of the friggin' walls and they're attacking oh. them. And they're like, oh no! So Eddie has the suit jump off of him, or like extend off of him to manual, like to manually override the Stargate, uh. so they can activate it and send them back home. Okay. Uh, and then the suit jumps onto Eddie so that the two of them can more practically fight the symbiotes and protect Ben and Pete. They were going to use like a disruption wave to deactivate or at the very least screw up the Stargate. Uh, but what happened was because they have what he calls a genetic memory, but what any self-respecting writer would call a hive mind, they are able to know what his plan is and how to do that. And so they don't do it before he does do it. And as a result, like they just get away with it. And so they turn on the Stargate and they send everybody. So it's an invasion force now. Okay. Oh, okay. Basically, their plan to turn off the Stargate fails, and so now the symbiotes yeah. are here. It, it fails because the symbiotes know about it. Yes, they knew about their plan before. beforehand. So instead, they just help the symbiotes enact their actual plan to come to Earth. That's right, that's yeah. right. I noticed that the uh, the Venom book doesn't have the comics code uh, thing on it. Actually, uh, but that's But all true. the rest of them do. Yeah, yeah that's, that? that's weird. Or maybe Venom doesn't have it because they're like, oh, Venom is a yes. more hardcore book. Yeah, no, that would not surprise me. It's not on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. He talks about eating people's brains and stuff. Right? <laughs> oh, that's not approved. A bunch of <laughs> the pros. comics code would never approve eat that. Brains? I'm sorry, eat brains? And he's the villain? No, he's, he's the hero. A hero? <laughs> he's, he's Heroes do not eat brains. These pearl clutching mothers <laughs> are like, <laughs> what? Is that Mary Jane working out? Yeah. Yeah, Mary Jane does a number of things to try and take her mind off of the fact that her husband is out there fighting symbiotes and, and, and teaming up with Venom. Uh, at one point, she tries on a maternity dress that she hopes she looks good in for Peter. In another, she is working out vigorously to try and, like, you know, keep off the baby weight. One oh of the women is like, God. hey, um, you might want to take it back a notch. And she's like, is your husband out there trying to, like, team up with a murderer and dealing with horrible monsters? And she's like, oh, what? She says, does uh, is your husband Spider Man? Yeah. She like, says, does, uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No. does your sweetie fight brain eating monsters from outer space? Yeah, and it's like, brilliant retort. What does that have to do with you being crazy? Right, well, it's just like, I, I would, you know, I'm having a rough day. Right, I guess. So the next one is the spectacular Spider Man Planet of the Symbiote Super Special. Uh, this one is drawn by Derek Robertson. Oh, okay. Who you also know. Yeah, I have, I've heard of them. This issue is some of my favorite art of the entire saga. Mm. Not including, you know, secret chapters throughout the stories, but in any case, the invasion- The cover is dope too. I know, it's the best cover. I don't yeah, know. that's freaking awesome. Um, the invasion took place. Like, in the last issue, we just see like thousands of dudes in symbiotes, like going through the, 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 the Stargate. Mm -hmm. The invasion took place, it's over. Captain America is a Venom now. Like. What? It's just we, what? just, we just jump ahead to like a news report where a reporter is explaining that like the National Guard has been taken over by symbiotes. Captain America himself is a symbiote. Uh, only Black Bolt and Human Torch are spared from the symbiote onslaught because Black Bolt can yell and Human Torch is fire. Right, because their, their abilities are the weaknesses of symbiotes. Yes. And in fact, they team kind up like, oh, sure. And. Then, when they show a file photo of a symbiote, it is actually a symbiote, and it comes out of the wall and attacks the reporter, <laughs> and in a like visual <laughs> gag, pulls his hairpiece off. Ha ha ha! Oh my uh, god! So in the in the last several stories, you know, Mary Jane was like, "I'm not gonna be a victim. I'm gonna go out and do stuff." Well, now there's an invasion, so she's bored up the windows and she's just <laughs> carrying out a, a knife, and she's like, "Man, this is stressful. It makes me want to smoke cigarettes." But I'm pregnant so i can't do that but i really want to i mean i guess this makes sense that she would do that she's got some negative association with that costume in general yes. and so for it to be everywhere yes like, yeah. yeah and what's I great is that. it's it's written by the guy who invented that problem in the first place okay. the only mm. issue with that is she has to forget about it in the next story oh, uh, okay well so spider-man ben and venom are being chased by symbiotes and uh they go to oh, man if ben had gotten the symbiote he would have been venom <laughs> <laughs> that would have been awesome. Uh, so, remember Carnage and Cletus, how he's in that coma? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, the, the, the lab is completely different now looking. And uh, <laughs> one of the security guards made a deal with the symbiote that, like, attached to him, even though none of them are willing to participate, but this one is. Uh, and it's only so that this dude can look like Venom but also have a mustache. 
<laughs> you know, for hilarious effect. Yeah. Uh, and so he is promised by the symbiote that he is attached to uh, that he'll get to run the facility when the symbiotes take over the world. Mm. So he kills his partner, a regular human, and when he does that, Cletus's thoughts from the coma appear on the computer screen that he's attached to and says, naughty, naughty. So the, the trucker hat Venom goes, hey, I thought you were in a coma. And Cletus's thoughts go, oh, it can think. And he goes, hey, I don't take that crap from you. And he stabs Cletus, hmm. which then unleashes the Carnage symbiote, what? goes over him because it's his blood. The Carnage symbiote's in his blood. What, so, so he the, can't get any, he can't take blood from him. No. He can't like accidentally do cut anything. Cut him, nope. Or you can't let him cut himself. That's right. That's but why it, he's in a straitjacket all the time. But, but what, if it was in his blood, why couldn't he just burst out of his skin anywhere right. he wanted? Yeah, he, right. he has, his eyes are exposed. Or like, why right. couldn't he like bite his own tongue? Right. Right. Well, he does have a mask on. Maybe it was like protecting him from I doing feel that. like it could, it's yeah. going to stop him from. Look. Maybe he's got a mouth guard. They got a mouth guard in there. Oh, underneath yeah, that's the true. But still, if Carnage can like move around and stuff as his blood, it should just be able to just burst through. Oh, his I skin. agree. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, so that doesn't happen, but he does become Carnage and he frees himself. He punches out the symbiote, but then the Carnage symbiote absorbs the symbiote attached to that guy, mm. and as a result, Carnage gets a little bigger. <laughs> oh no! Why? Oh, Do we just no. run out of ideas? Yes. Like so that's a carnage ability? Is it is a carnage unique ability, yes. Symbiotes. Sure. He can he can get bigger by absorbing other symbiotes. Oh no. Oh, I, I know think you can see going. where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> so Spider-Man, Ben, and Venom go to a mall. Uh, there's always time in 1995 for a Barney joke. <laughs> it's Benny, though. That's right. Skate with Benny. Uh, they use this whole thing. There's an there's an ice skating rink in this mall. It's it's Benny on ice. It's Barney doing an ice show. But you're at the food court. Why would it's that be here? In the middle here? of the food court. The next to next to Haggis and Cafe <laughs> Flesh. You know that's kind of like the yeah. skating rink at the, at, Flesh. at the at the American Dream Mall. Yeah, that's true. Because it's just like in the middle, and there's like stores I got and stuff the around idea. it. Yeah, yeah, they, Maybe. they they're huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, they did conceive of that mall in like 1995. That's so, true. Yeah. yeah, it's been under it's been <laughs> under construction for 30 years. So. Uh, Ben goes to the department store and, and grabs oh a new hoodie. Oh my god, I hoodie. was gonna make a joke. And yep, he's gotta get a new hoodie. Yep, rips his sleeves off, gets a, uh, a, a display marker and just draws the spider on it. <laughs> and yeah, Now I'm complete. And leaves a few dollars if someone ever comes back and notices the missing inventory. Right. Okay. That way we know he's not a thief. Right. Uh, the employee sees it and just like puts it in their pocket. Oh yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what happens every single time. I'm, I'm, <laughs> It's more unrealistic to do that than to just take this shit. Uh, so uh, the, the team splits up to go get, like, fire supplies. Uh, oh, stuff that can make fire. Yeah, to fight the symbiotes. Right, so now it's a zombie movie. Yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, Pete tries to call Mary Jane, and, uh, you know, it's 1995, so all the cell phones are, like, display models, and they're, like, dead. Mm. So, nope, they couldn't find anything flammable. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ben arrives. It's like the lamest mall in the mm -hmm. world. Yeah. You couldn't find anything flammable. Speaking of longer. Photoshop techniques that are very, very new and they're using them to full effect, um, uh, Robertson notices how to use the blur effect, try and create depth of field. And you'll notice it through, oh, like, yeah. periodically throughout the book. He'll use it to try. Oh, yeah. And oh, let me tell that. you something. In 95, that's a showstopper. <laughs> it was a game changer. It looked, it looked really cool. You're like, yeah. what is happening? Yeah, I was like, oh my god. There was a moment in one of the books where like they do a blur effect, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so just a little Sal. <gasps> <gasps> the future is now. Right. So uh, Spidey takes off. He's like, all right. I, I think I got an idea. Venom leave. And Venom's like, oh, right, you can't kick me out of here. He's like, dude, I I'm doing a thing. It's gonna hurt symbiotes. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> so. Uh, he turns on the Benny Show music oh, on yeah. the huge speakers to try and like drown them out and use Sonics. <laughs> and Ben's like, "It's not enough. You've got to don't look. Use the microphone." You're right. You got to create feedback. And so he yeah. does, and that upsets the symbiotes enough for them to make their escape. Mm. And so they're like, "All right, actually, that gave me an idea, because." If we could reverse the direction of the now called jump gate, 
because somebody got a C and D. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, the jump gate, formerly Stargate, uh, maybe we could send them back. If we reverse the polarity. Right. You know. <sighs> and then something good will happen. Yeah. Yeah, it'll suck them up. But he's like, look, if we can amplify the psychic shriek that Venom symbiote did the first time, maybe it'll cause them so much pain that they'll just leave. They'll be like, oh, it sucks here. That'll probably work. I mean, it will because you need it to. Yeah. Right. But that'll probably work. Yeah, maybe. The, th the same thing that drew them there, maybe we'll they, make we'll, them leave. they'll hate it. If it was so loud, if it's really loud. But right. if we reverse the polarity of something. We also have to do that. It'll be we'll like do both. Uh, filling a balloon and then something something good happens. Yeah. So, meanwhile, Carnage uh, is like, what's going on? Carnage, you know, he was out of the he was out of the book for three chapters. So yeah. He's like, what? I need, I need the, the short version. Right. And so what he does is because he's absorbed that one symbiote, uh, he holds his hand over a flame, an open flame, and tortures himself, because the symbiote's part of him now, to extract information about what's going on. From the symbiote? He can't just, like, read its thoughts? No. Oh. Which he absolutely should. What? But remember, the symbiote that he has, he is the symbiote. Like, there is no we in this equation. It's right. just me. There's just me. Unless this, the current symbiote gets on Ben Riley. But that's another story. So the symbiotes can what? talk to their host through their minds, but they can't talk to other symbiotes that they're merged I with. I mean, they definitely should be able to. But in this well, I guess they could talk to them, but they don't. They they can't read their thoughts. Yes. Maybe he felt like he'd get a better answer if there were real stakes. Yes. Yeah. We we just want to show how hardcore and scary yeah. Carnage is. Yeah, he's willing wow, to burn he's himself. Wow, he's so super cool. Mm -hmm. it's awesome. You know what? I, I hear he rules. That's true. He, he does. And he writes that stuff down a lot. Like, <laughs> out of people's blood, but still on the wall. So the spider trio uh, spring into action. They go to the jump gate and uh, they attack the symbiotes. They throw like a Molotov cocktail or something to try and get their attention. Meanwhile, the ship that the original contingent came in takes off and they jump on it and they have a big fight. Uh, meanwhile, there's also like a cannon and it is attached to either another ship or the gate itself, but it's not really clear and they don't really get into it, but uh, they so shoot their own gate. How come, what? Yeah, the symbiotes fire on their own gate and oh, destroy so that it. that they can't be sent back. That's right, because they're all here. It's over. Like, it's not right. like we need to stem the tide. Like, no, the tide has come. Yeah, all the ones that were going to come are here. Are here. So, all the symbiotes are here. So Every symbiote. <laughs> in the world. In, in, the, the, in, in the, the universe. Yeah. Are Why here. aren't the superhero ones fighting them? Right. Because that would be really cool to see. Right. That's and I thought that was the point of... Showing, of showing Captain America as a, as, a, as a Venom, yeah. yeah, because because they haven't thought about the marketability of making everyone into a Venom. Making right. Captain America into a Venom is years. a joke that they threw out there. Right. It literally is the preamble to a bald joke. So like, they're not thinking fourth dimensional yet. <laughs> missed opportunity. It, it is it is a missed uh, opportunity that Donny Cates will not avoid. They, they got a they got a real problem with that. I agree. <laughs> so they're like, oh. Like, why, that, that explains why they weren't so protective of the jump gate. When we right. got here, it's because they don't need it anymore. They're here to stay. And that's when Carnage, the size of a skyscraper, shows up. <laughs> right. He says, hey, hope you don't mind. I stopped along the way for some snacks. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, now... I ate, like, I ate, like, a thousand snacks. <laughs> I ate, like, here. most of I them. I did it off panel. It would be great if they were like, oh, no, there's a symbiote invasion force. We need to fight the symbiotes and Carnage. And it's like, Carnage like, I ate all the symbiotes. There aren't any more. <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. Right. So that's the penultimate chapter of Planet of the Simians, but it, it, it's, its conclusion is a doozy, I will yep. tell you. Uh, this one, of course, is drawn by Steve Lytle. I gotta say, I don't hate this. No, it's not. I it's, mean, it's, it's it actually kind of cool. It is pure, unadulterated popcorn fun. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and the character interactions are authentic and solid. Mm -hmm. um, just Derek Robertson also drew this. Yeah, he just kept going. But George Perez inked it. That explains why it's so different from the look of the previous story. Yeah. It's also written by Stan Lee. That's the story where uh, Pete and Mary Jane go to Aunt May's uh, grave. Uh. And it's kind of cool because, like, it's Stan writing about, like, an adult, married, uh, prospective father, Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they go to the grave and they're attacked by street toughs. And Peter, like, beats the shit out of them without even, th he's just like, uh, like, there's a guy who's like, hey, man, give me your money. He's like, uh, and he punches him across the cemetery and they're like, oh my god! Like, and he just, he's like, hey man, I got a gun, I'll kill you! And he just crushes the gun, like, without even thinking. And Mary Jane's like reacting to it and he's like, yeah. Uh, 
I mean, this like, is, that's so great. This is an exception. Like, this issue is yeah. an exceptional example of how an anchor can change the look of the an look artist. Of, like, of an artist. Like, 100%. Like, if you ever, like, I don't understand. Like, I like them in this book, but I don't like them in this book. Yeah. Check the anchors. But, like, this is a, this is so different. Oh, yeah. Like, that's insane. There's one that's night and day for me. Well, I'll never forget it. Unfortunately, it's a bad example. But, like, it's Sal Buscema's pencils with Bill Sienkiewicz's inks. And it makes for the ugliest art I've ever seen. <laughs> it is just, it is so, and I get what they're doing. And it's, like, it's all Sienkiewicz. He is going for broke on that, on that art. And I appreciate the the marriage of those two art styles. Nothing in the world looks like that combination. <laughs> but for me, you know, if we're like a Bagley booster to like switch chapters to this next, I'm like, oh my God, it's so ugly. <laughs> but it's not ugly. It's just more like very much not my kind of cup of tea. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that's a, that's, that's a really fun one. This is way better than Separation Anxiety. Oh my god, Separation <laughs> Anxiety could take a hike. Man, when are they gonna make <laughs> Giant Joker? Right? Oh. Giant Joker. Ah, oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, well, the they Joker, did. The Joker who grows. They, they kind of did an Emperor Joker, where he gets, like, mixes Pitlick powers. Yeah. Uh, do whatever he wants. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so Carnage is throwing out his old Carnage you know, tricks, like throwing pieces of himself as daggers. Mm. Does he use an ax? He does not use an ax. Oh. But Pete's like, they're huge, so I can avoid them better. Like, this is actually kind of better. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, you know, they, they fight him, um, and Karn's like, crap, I need to be bigger to fight them. So he just starts sucking symbiotes off of regular people, mm -hmm. and, absor and they're like, okay, so that's how it's working. Right. Yikes. <laughs> Are the people dead or no. they're okay? They're, are, no, are they this, could be if they were on there longer. Like, are they, the symbiotes like, hey, we should team up with those no. guys now because this no, is a, this is not good. No, it's a three-way fight. We got the symbiotes versus the trio versus Carnage. Interesting. I, I feel like I wouldn't back that. No, I, I'd be like, you yeah. know what? Like, we need Carnage the enemy like of the my enemy is right my, now. Is my friend. Yeah. Wow. So the trio needs some R and R. So they end what? up breaking into. But they uh, just ran away. They just leave. Okay. I and mean, so, he's huge. Yeah, he's unstoppable. Yeah, like what are you gonna do? Right. Like, oh, we that's lost. That's like a real problem. <laughs> oh, it's a real problem. Like he's all like, "Hi, it's me. I'm the problem." <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's me. Yeah. Uh, look, he's gonna be tomorrow's problem too. So <laughs> oh, okay. I, I need to. He'll like, still be here. Yeah, giant carnage will still be there in the morning. That's right. And I need to take a shower, <laughs> which is literally what Peter Parker does. <laughs> So they break into the apartment, and, and Mary Jane's like, "Duh!" Because Venom's the first one who walks through the door. Oh my god! Hey, hey, hey! You want to see something? Yeah. Hey, watch Ven this. Venom going first. Yeah, hey, Ben. Uh, you you know what? You don't know about the baggage with this guy. Let's watch Mary Jane lose her shit. So she tries to stab Venom because she's like a strong, capable woman. Right. And uh, the Spider-Man grabs her wrist and is like, "Hey, like we're teaming up with Venom. It's okay." And so she's like, "It is not okay." She's like, no, it's not. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Does does Peter bother to check on any other friends right now? No. Okay, cool. No time for that. He's got a shower. <laughs> he feels gross. He feels gross. So he showers and he's like, "We gotta. I gotta go. I gotta get refreshed before I go back out there." And she's like, "You're not going back out there." Mm -hmm. And so we watch Peter have a domestic argument with his wife while his clone and greatest nemesis sit on the couch and watch cartoons and drink beers and talk to each other, <laughs> like. Jeez, look, sounds like Pete's in the doghouse. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? They're like, we don't know. It's amazing. But is that a like, hoodie in the blowfish shirt she's wearing? That is exactly what it's it is. Fucking awesome. Which, uh, you know, if you said it in today, she just pulled it out of a, you know, out of a, out of a Salvation Army box. <laughs> but uh, she's like, listen, and she's gonna start. Normally, she's like, think about our marriage, think about Aunt May, you know. But mm. now she can say, think about our baby. Mm. And so. Um, He's like, I am. What kind of world would the baby grow up in if it was With one of my or a giant carnage or both? <laughs> what? Yeah, what is even happening? Oh, we're, 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 I, I want to draw a more grotesque transformation sequence for Venom. And so, like, the, the symbiote oozes out of his eyes and blasts a second mouth blast out of his own mouth. I just... <sighs> we, we, uh, I really want to lean into the body horror aspect of Venom. I feel like people haven't done that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's like, we are the horror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But like, we may also be the cure. That's the, you know. That's the rest of it? Yeah. So they're, they're, they end up, Great. they're literally talking to each other around the dinner table, just like, just hashing out their plan. 
Are they trying to make? Are they, are they doing like a? Oh no, she's eat, she's eating the apple. I thought she was offering him the apple. Like, uh, she is offering the apple, and then he eats it out of her hand. Like he doesn't say yes. Looks so like she starts. She, oh, okay. So she starts eating it, and then he uses his tongue and goes across the room. <laughs> if you have a symbiote, and I have a symbiote, and I have a tongue, here it is. <laughs> And my tongue reaches across the table and starts to eat your apple. Or your brains. Or your brains. I eat your brains. <laughs> I eat them up. Uh. Venom plain view. So <laughs> he eats the apple and he's like, all right, so like, here's my plan. You got a solid plan. Yep. You're going to be excited to be part of it. All right, Venom, what you got? I am going to have another freak out in which I need to give a psychic scream. That was that's not your plan. All right, yes, it is it is the plan we had before, but <laughs> I need to amplify my psychic agony by going to a place that will bring me even more anguish. So they go to Our Lady of Saints, the church where Venom <laughs> was like, born. So let's go to the Daily so Bugle. Right. Emo. No, he didn't work for the Daily Bugle. He worked for the Daily Globe. Oh, well, let's go to the Daily Globe. <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, and bring the Sin Eater uh, that I accused the first time, and uh, Peter, you too, and right. Carnage. No, they go to the. And the I, I think there's a couple of like you know of my friends from when I was in eighth grade. They <laughs> they kicked me in the nuts. They made me feel real bad. Yeah. <laughs> no, they go to the church where he was gonna you know kill himself and uh, uh, you sure. know become venom and stuff. So uh, they go, and he's like, and, and I love it because like we spent two pages of Peter and Mary J being like, you can't go out there. We've got another Peter Parker who can go out there with venom. Like you're good. <laughs> and then he just goes, I gotta go. <laughs> and she goes, I know. And he mm. leaves. I guess she's so, like, I have to try. Yeah. yeah. I but, know you're not going right, to, right. but I have to say I try. Exactly. So they go. So and if you do die and I do have this child, I could be like, I tried I to stop him. I definitely tried yes. to stop him. It's not my fault that you don't yeah. have a dad. <laughs> <laughs> so they go to the church and uh, Ben and Peter are like, all right, well, we'll let you do whatever you <laughs> need to do in here. Torture you yourself just, mentally. You just <laughs> get on with all that. Yeah. That's right. Over and so there. they go out and engage giant carnage. Uh can we call him Kaiju Carnage? Kaiju <laughs> Carnage? Yeah, sure. absolutely. So they fight Kaiju Carnage, and literally, Eddie and the suit, like, hug each other and cry and scream. <laughs> okay. But it's not working. It's getting the attention of the symbiotes, but it's not uh, quite working enough. Listen, so sometimes you just gotta, you know, hug the other hug part it of out. yourself and scream it out. That's right. So then it realizes, like, it's not enough. Like, it's drawing them in, but we've got to do something else. It's going to really... i got to draw them in even more. Well, i gotta, I got to use... I, I, I need... I can't fake this psychic scream. It's got to be real. It's got to be right. real agony. Right. Uh, well, I've got to be more miserable. Yes, that's right. And so My while, misery will save the day once again. Yeah. I'm Venom. So Spider-Man and Ben Riley, is Scarlet Spider, they go fight, uh, you know, Kaiju Carnage. And uh, Kaiju Carnage, like, knocks Peter out. And Ben lures Kaiju Carnage to a Roxxon oil tanker. Mm. And when okay. Peter wakes up, he's like, oh, my God, I must have a concussion because I smell fumes. Wait a minute, no. And he looks over at Ben, and Ben's like, hey! And Pete's like, oh, I see what you're doing. And you'd think, like, okay, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna get Kaiju Carnage to smash the tanker. Right. And it'll, it'll erupt in flames. And... But no. I'm going to open the tanker up. So there's fumes coming out of the tanker. Yeah. And yeah, because gasoline doesn't just explode on its own. And there are there are stray open flames from other wrecks around the tanker, mm -hmm. and our spider senses will trigger when it's going to explode. Like yeah. they'll know when it's going to explode, and so we will just wait around until it's ready to explode and draw Kaiju Carnage in. And indeed, they do, and they're going to have to wait like re like. The, as long as they can mm -hmm. to make sure he falls for it and they do and it explodes and it blasts Kaiju Carnage away and Ben and Peter in opposite directions and we get to see like the last thoughts of Peter Parker and Ben Riley if they were to die <laughs> where Peter says did I remember to say I love you to Mary Jane before I left today Aww. and Ben saying I'm sorry to Peter mm. you know for being annoying and ruining his books <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I guess it's an I'm sorry to the reader that's right he is apologizing to the reader Peter pulls Ben out of like the river 
and Ben has a huge piece of shrapnel in his leg that will not be important later in the story. <laughs> and then they realize that the river is like swelling up and getting all rough and nope, it's just a river of symbiotes and it's just what? splashes up and attacks them. It's the zero hour, ladies and gentlemen, oh no. And so as the, as the other symbiotes are converging on Eddie and the symbiote, remember they separated, he's like, wait, the psychic signal isn't powerful enough. We were always strongest when we were together. And so they merge, but this time, they they join like never before. It's really kind of horrific. It I is the most like horrific it. I've ever seen a bonding between these two that, that that promises this is a bonding. This is a, this is this is more than a bonding. This is a becoming. They are combining that goes beyond physical and molecular and irrevocable linking of the spirit, which of course they will ignore later on in these stories. <laughs> but like, trust me when I tell you, when this was happening- it's totally different than it's ever been. The, the, the that, whole like anguish about like, are you making me crazy? Do we have this whole, that is dead and buried. We are never dealing with that again. They are together, <laughs> they are codependent, and they are one now. So are they trying to say that the reason that the Venom symbiote is the way it is though, is because of the way his people are? It's an aberration of its people. Right, its but people he's an aberration. Right, but the people also kill people. And he's like, I mean, I'm still gonna kill people. Oh right. yeah, but right. just but it's those people. I don't kill right. my people. I don't kill the people inside me. Yeah. Right. That's right. And so Ben and uh, Peter are caught in like a tidal wave of symbiotes. Uh, <laughs> but then uh, they feel the hopelessness of abandonment and grief. And so, you know, because everyone would. And of course, like, oh, remember, I guess it's working. when the Venom symbiote <laughs> yelled that one time over there, it made people like blow their brains out. Right. But this merging of souls <laughs> is fine. But what? it's also so extreme that <laughs> it literally causes all the symbiotes themselves to commit suicide. What? And they unmake themselves and become dust and just float away in the breeze. What? Yeah. They... What? They blade to themselves? <laughs> yes. Just but, Just from a scream. Well, it's a... I don't know if you saw that scream. No, I Look saw it. Look at his it. eyeball. It's in the middle of them. I saw the scream. It's... That's so lame. That's so lame. What the hell? But they I wrote wondered themselves how they were going to fix this problem. Yeah, that's like the definition they, of writing yourself into a corner. Why did they bother exploding Carnage? Clearly, they could have just had them all abandon him. Like right. the power of the scream is so powerful that, that they jump off of him and yeah, then explode. That like they yeah. they're able to escape Carnage. Well, because we needed to see Peter and Ben solve a problem yes, before this is a book. Venom oh, solved right. the main problem. Okay. It's like everyone's got to get their little day in the sun. That's right. And so they burst into the church with moral indignation and go, you said that that scream would have made them into comas. And I'm like, did he? I don't remember them saying that. What? Right, whatever. But, <laughs> I, uh, I thought goes, they were going to go on spaceships and leave or right. something. And he no, goes, you were thinking of, of Cletus. He yeah. was in a coma. That's, <laughs> right. yeah, that's, that's how you what got you that. I think that's the idea. I think the idea was that they were going to make the, <laughs> the scream was going to make them into comas and then we could collect them and put them somewhere. We're going to put them. Uh, we are going to we'll put all them of them. The we will definitely no. find all of them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All the, not going to be a It's not like they can disguise themselves as stuff. No. They'll be so upset. Do you think this rock is a symbiote or do you think it's just a rock. Like, better oh, throw no. it into space just better in case. Better throw it oh, into space. Okay. Put it in the pile. <laughs> but, uh, but Venom's like, yeah, and uh, what if I told you that I was intending to murder an entire race? Because that's what we did. We just committed genocide. <laughs> I mean, I guess you're the last <sighs> of them then. Oh, well, Except for Carnage, who left. And they were right. like, where's Carnage? And he's gone. And they're like, oh, man. And it's what's worse. Oh, man. It's, it's worse than that because Venom goes, oh, no, it's Carnage. And they go, huh? And then when they turn around, Venom jumps out the window and leaves. Nuts. Nuts! <laughs> Venom suckered us. So all the symbiotes are dead except for Venom and Carnage. All of those symbiotes. No, no, no. The five symbiotes from like the Life Foundation, they're oh, still around. they're still around. Oh, Although they weren't he, affected, well, I guess. Well, he did disintegrate them in, lethal, in the Lethal Protector arc, but uh, he didn't in their back, too. <laughs> because that also happened in Separation Anxiety, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no. Okay. Hey, Peter Parker must be home. He is. Because he doesn't have a shirt on. Because he's naked, yeah. yeah. He and Actually, that's Ben. Oh. So oh. technically, Peter Parker is not wearing a shirt, oh, but okay. you know, it's splitting hairs. <gasps> oh, uh, that means Peter is wearing a shirt. That's right. He's wearing a white Peter. Oh, wow. It must be really confusing for Mary Jane to have like her husband in yeah. two different positions on the if couch. If I were Peter, I'd be like, dude, you got to wear a shirt when you're around, around my wife. wife. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want her getting all confused. Yeah, you look just like me. It's kind of not cool. I, I really don't need that. Yeah. We just facilitated a genocide. That's not fair. And Ben goes, Pete, 
they were monsters. Remember it said it before? Right? Like, we did that. The, the world of the monsters or monster yeah. world. Yeah, monster or whatever, world. Whatever and then Mary Jane goes, you know, their deaths didn't just save our world, but they would have gone to other worlds and killed other races. Yeah. yeah. Like, I guess the ends do justify the means. What? The needs of the many. Yeah. Right. And Pete's like, you make so much sense, it frightens me sometimes, Mary Jane. And then... I, I just really need this book to wrap on yeah, up here. What the Let's not... Let's like, not discuss Don't the, be upset about the fact yeah, don't that Don't even we, worry about listen, those. Don't even worry. If, don't even think about it. <laughs> if you're not going to actually have the conversation about the moral yeah, ramifications, don't, then don't, don't introduce don't it. Don't broach yep. the subject. Just don't have go this like, like, sophomoric, like, hand-wavy. Yeah. Well, if, if you need to show the end, just be like, that was weird. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That was messed that was up. What do you else? think? One close up of Peter going, oh my God. And, and like, that's or, the end. Or one of them going, what do you think happened to Carnage? I don't know. Yeah. I hope he died. Dot, dot, dot. And then the whole thing wraps up with Venom going, we are content. We have reconciled our ambivalence and accepted what we are. Like, I don't want to talk about whether, will they, won't they with Venom. Uh, he prints money. <laughs> yes, we He's will. Venom. He's all in. He's all in. Now and forever, we remain Venom. And I'm like, shut up, Venom. <laughs> anyway, and that's and then there's two Ugh. other stories, one of which involves Black Cat. Who cares? But uh, yeah, Planet of the Symbiotes. By the way, if you do get the collected edition, they leave out all the extra crap. Right. It's just the Planet of the Symbiote stuff, which, you know, you do lose a couple of things, but it does have a couple of fun collections. Like, it has a couple of, like, pencils only of a few pages in the first story oh. uh it shows all the covers and uh and there's a foreword by ralph macchio not to the karate kid but rather the <laughs> spider-man editor uh, uh. who is not an editor anymore but he did talk about how uh he he echoed my own sentiments about venom being involved in the spider-man story arcs at all where he's like i don't like the idea of spider-man fighting aliens he doesn't do that. Right. But, like, Stan did have Spider-Man fight an alien once in, like, the earlier days. <laughs> so, like, if Stan can sneak in an alien, I guess, like, Michelini could too. You know, I guess that's fine. But, like, it is... Essentially what Machio admits is that Venom prints money. And so, right. what? Am, who am I to complain? Right. And I'm like, that's pretty bankrupt of you. <laughs> like, it's not like, you know, admitting well, that Venom is a rich character, like, that, that's, that's just saying, like, well, you know, it is, like, morally repugnant and conceptually bankrupt, but, like, it does make us a lot of money, so I guess I'm just gonna have to shut up about it. Like, what a, what a great forward for your story <laughs> about millions of symbiotes coming to Earth and showcasing the two most popular ones, one of which becomes Revenge of the 40-Foot Woman. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, damn it. You know, and I looked into, like, interviews about this, and then I realized, why? Like I really wanted to get some background on this, and then I immediately abandoned it because I'm like, "What are you? What are you gonna say? <laughs> what was the idea here? The idea was to sell yeah. five parts of a book that didn't exist. Like these books don't exist, and they don't come back. There's a part two. Right. Many of these super so specials. Super special number two no. the next year. Yeah. They, they they sold. They got they got four bucks per book. They got they got twenty bucks out of you. Yeah. In a book that they knew, because back then they didn't collect every story. Mm -hmm. They didn't care. Their trade game was sorely lacking back then. <laughs> like, they were very selective. I remember very vividly paying top dollar for Birth of Venom. The, 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 the trade paperback that collected the Michelini McFarlane first arc mm -hmm. of Venom. And it was hard to get, and it came with its own custom plastic wrap around it. Ooh. Because, like, they didn't make sleeves for trade paperbacks. Okay. It was also a different size than your normal standard book. Because like, Marvel didn't give a crap right, they about collective volumes. They hadn't defined the formula yet. No, DC was actually better at, produ at producing trades than Marvel ever did. Because Marvel's like, I mean like look, admittedly this is all shit anyway. <laughs> Like you're gonna, <laughs> yeah. you want wow. you want to know what the story is? Go into those long boxes from those specialty shops and pick them up for a buck a book. You know, it's not like they're gonna make billion dollar franchises out of these rando mm. characters and they're gonna suddenly become like encased in little invisible coffins <laughs> and <laughs> jacked up to the price that uh, of, of a used car. Those coffins existed. Yes, they did. Well, they existed, especially yeah, back then they started to, but they were also. Vi 
they were not ubiquitous. No. Yeah, you, no. those were for crazy people. They were for they were for hardcore collectors, yeah. as, the, as they were referred to back then. <laughs> Actually, no. Now they're called that. Back then, they were called crazy people. <laughs> I didn't know they even existed back then, and I was in every comic book store I could find back then. Yeah. Now, you can't escape them. You can't escape them. They're horrible. Much like the planet of the symbiotes. Oh, oh. all you got to do is just feel really bad about yourself, and they'll all die. <laughs> What a crappy idea. That's awesome. That's all I do all the time. <laughs> that's like, I'm the expert that's at that. That's my move. That's like the exact opposite of all holding hands. and Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah it's like the anti-Scott Snyder wrote this book. <laughs> they don't care bear stare unless they get that one care bear that's always sad. You know, the man depressive one. <laughs> Grumpy. Grumpy. The only way that they could have continued it is to just do Scream. Because it's... It should mm. go Venom, Carnage, Scream. But Scream was just a, full, a fifth of the of the Life Foundation symbionts. Right. But Scream, dope looking, yeah. so popular and iconic yeah. that they used her in the Spider-Man ride at Universal Studios. <laughs> That's right. She's a do. member of the Sinister yeah, Six. Yeah, I forgot there. I always forget there is a scream because I'm always like Shriek, and I'm like, Shriek, no, wait, Shriek like, is no, just Shriek is the Harley Carnage's, Quinn of yeah. Carnage. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, every time. Because I'm always like Phage. Phage. Riot. Riot. Yep. Scream. Scream. <sighs> Lasher. Lasher. And, and the other girl, the who's other purple. Girl. Oh yeah, I forgot about her. Yep, it's not a verb. Um. Is it agony? It is agony. Uh, wow, really? Oh, yep, you named no. it. Really I really had a plot. I didn't get, I did not get last year. I did not. No, I got, I got no. four out of five. It's not bad. <laughs> when when one of them is Phage and you get four out of five. <laughs> yeah, I bad. always remember Phage and Riot. Those are my go-to. For no reason, Phage and Riot are my favorite. You know what? Riot. Because they're derivatives. Because Riot is just gray venom and Phage is just orange carnage. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. A yellow. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week with an all new episode of Back Issues. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. And I'm Tiffany. Keep reading. So, I wanted to wait till the end of the episode to put it in there. But boy, what a feminist work there is going on in the middle of this book. Oh, wow. Oh,